Our third contestant, number 210, the title of a speech, Pua. <laughs> When thou seest my mockery, thou shalt not be too pleased with me. Thou should sit back and relax and laugh at everything you see. For mine oh oh is a, a no no by most standards in debate. But do not fear, my friends and fools, for I am one who lives on faith. <laughs> From the moment of my birth, I've been taking chances. The doctor delivering me pulled out a very sharp object, attempting to cut off a piece of my childhood, so I peed on him. <laughs> When I was 16, a police officer stopped me for speeding. When he looked at me and said, son, you know that you were going 75 in a 40? I said, really, officer? I could have sworn I was going at least 90. <laughs> yeah, he gave me the ticket. Last fall, I asked this girl out, despite the fact that everyone told me not to. Let me tell you something. She rejected me. <laughs> Actually, she didn't flat out reject me. She just said, I don't know. Yeah, so when people came up to me and they said, hey, Josh, you're going out with Brooke? I said, oh, yeah, yeah, but she doesn't know. <laughs> Taking chance after chance. This has been the story of my life. Risk after risk. Failure after failure. But eventually, success after success. And if there's one thing that I've learned, it's that despite the setbacks, the risks are all worth the effort. As Al Pacino so eloquently states in the movie, Scent of a Woman, hoo That's it. That's all he says. <laughs> Because, you see, Pacino's character, that of a middle-aged blind man, achieves his own sense of happiness and fulfillment through the countless risks that he takes, like driving an automobile. He figures, hoo what the hell, I have nothing to lose. And it is that rebellious spirit that embodies the very essence of risk-taking, recognizing that the greatest adversity can often yield the greatest payoff. But even without knowing the final outcome, we must strive to take the chance, or we will never know what might have been if only dot, dot, dot. And to achieve success in filling in that blank, we must first understand the nature of risk-taking. Second, recognize the difference between positive and negative risks. And most importantly, have the courage to then seize the opportunities. Author Miles Hodges, in his book Living by Faith, states that we are currently faced with a dualistic society that on the one hand copies out of fear of the unknown, and on the other hand takes risks simply for the sake of taking risks, causing meaningless and often deleterious outcomes. Okay, for example, going to the Phoenix Zoo, rubbing deer's blood all over your head, jumping into the lion's pit, kicking the lion's cub, and then saying to yourself, yeah, I'm going to take whatever happens like a man now. <laughs> Well, sure, it's innovative, but obviously not a worthwhile risk. No. It is reconciling the inane with the more sane approaches to risk-taking that will enable us to embrace the risk and ultimately enjoy the payoff. Dr. Francis McDavid, author of Vicarious Living, raises yeah, a, a rather interesting point in her book concerning risk-taking. She found that people, get this, often don't take the ultimate risk because they are afraid of the final outcome. Whew. Thank you for that wonderful insight, Dr. McDavid. <laughs> Here's a title for your next book, Stating the Obvious, How I Make My Living. <laughs> It is probably apparent to everyone in this auditorium that risks are indeed sometimes scary to take. Oh, but as McDavern so eloquently states, one cannot know the uh, final outcome until one has taken the risk. <laughs> Profound, isn't it? <laughs> Folks, this lady has a PhD. 
That hurts. Anyway, I've often been confronted with such risky ventures where the final outcomes were anything but a sure bet. At the beginning of this school year, my friend and I were trying to decide in the duo for competition on the national circuit. We wanted something that would be both funny and original. We ended up doing the Monica Lewinsky-Linda trip tapes. <laughs> when I first told my friend about the idea, his initial reaction was reminiscent of a dog being neutered by a beautiful female nurse. He was scared and bewildered, but at the same time strangely attracted to the idea. <laughs> Suffice it to say, my friend and I took the risk and ultimately reaped numerous benefits through our risky endeavor, proving once again that hua is the only way to go. You know, before I go on, I, I just, I need to sit down for a second. Oh. My back is killing me. This isn't that bad, is it? Sure, it's, it's a bit unusual to do in an oratory final round, but wrong. <laughs> Meanwhile, all the competitors are saying to themselves, well, at least I've still got a chance of winning the national championship. <laughs> the judges are thinking, is there a rule against this? Which, by the way, as far as I know, there isn't. I promise. <laughs> Shelly Long is back there wondering where the hell Ted Danson is. <laughs> and my coach is sitting in the audience saying, I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Folks, I'm simply trying to make a point, albeit a small one, but a point nevertheless. Of course, this really isn't that big of a deal, but even this tiny little symbolic risk has many people in this auditorium feeling quite uncomfortable. <laughs> I say, hua. And to be honest, I was kind of tired anyway. <laughs> now, it is crucial to understand that there's a big difference between taking positive risks that enhance the well-being of one's life and taking risks that hurt others and consequently ruin relationships and lives. So I've compiled a short list of positive and negative risks that might enhance your judgment of what to do in certain situations. Let's see. Running frantically up to Pope John Paul II, yelling, Give me that! As you proceed to remove his hat and give him a knuckle noogie while screaming, Who's your daddy, Pope, huh? Who's your daddy? <laughs> Bad risk. <laughs> Refusing to give your seat up on a bus simply because of the color of your skin, knowing very well that you will be punished for doing so. Rosa Parks, that's a great risk. A man dressing in women's lingerie, wearing lipstick and eyeshadow while dancing to Ricky Martin music, eating caviar and reciting Emily Dickinson poetry as his fiance shows up with the in-laws. Marv Albert, how many times do I have to tell you that it's a terrible risk? <laughs> Spending your meager life savings on a venture you believe in while everyone around you calls you and your idea failure. I think Walt Disney would tell you that it's a wonderful risk. I hope you understand what I'm getting at. Risks should be taken with thoughtful determination and not be carelessly detrimental to you or your interpersonal relationships. Heed the advice of actor Dean Martin, who stated, don't be stupid, it just wouldn't be smart of you. <laughs> so far we have seen that taking chances can mean success in daily life. In some cases, however, taking a risk can save a life. In 1945, at the end of the Second World War, legions of Jews who had been confined to concentration camps during the Holocaust were sent on death marches. The Jews would walk hundreds of miles without shoes and food until they met their untimely deaths. One such Jew, a 16-year-old girl by the name of Evelyn Greenblatt, walked that death march in the winter of 1945 through Czechoslovakia. Her foot was infected, her body sore, Death seemed imminent. One day while marching with the others, Evelyn successfully escaped the highly guarded line and hid in the forest. Consequently, she also escaped the destiny of millions of other Jews and was eventually discovered by a squadron of American soldiers 
from whom she received liberation, Evelyn Greenblatt, my grandmother, believed in herself enough to run away from the same people that had killed most of her family. To this day, Nana reminds me that she took that risk not only to save her own life, but primarily to prove that although the Nazis had killed most of her family, they could not kill all of her family. That although the Nazis had killed many of her people, they could not kill all of her people. Had she not taken this risk, I probably wouldn't be here today telling you her story or any other story. So I say, hua, Nana, hua. Okay, here's where I stop. Here's where I say, who out of you? No more gimmicks, no more fancy articles, just me. You want a solution. In this case, as trite as it may sound, you are the solution. Each of us must make a decision to take a chance. Make a decision on the trivial issues of who to date or what forensics piece to perform, or the more important issues of fighting prejudice, believing in your dreams, or simply running away. You have to be willing to say to yourself that yes, you can take a chance if it will better your life. Because remember, the solution of risk taking is not in our taking the risk, it's in the opportunities that lie beyond it. The opportunities that may or may not exist, but that we certainly should never ignore. I recently came across an anonymously posted article on the internet entitled, Risk Taking is Free that epitomizes what taking risks is all about. The poem reads, to love is to risk not loving in return. To live is to risk dying. To hope is to risk despair. To try is to risk failure. But the risk must be taken because the greatest hazard in life is to risk nothing. The person who risks nothing does nothing, has nothing, is nothing. So with those words in mind, I say to you, now that you have heard my speech, I hope to others you may teach to take a risk without regret, to laugh at fear with pride, not fret. If there's something you might believe in, don't go on dreaming, just take hold. And when you do, my friends, you'll find that risks might bring rewards in time. Hooah!